Welcome everybody to this session. Really pleased to see so many people here. And welcome to the two speakers in the first part of the session as well. So uh, what this first half of the tech covers is we're giving, going to give you updates on what has been going on on different health, health related studies. So this, there's quite a lot to cover. So we've split this first half of the day into two. So first we're focusing on cross-sectional studies. And in the first session we will have two speakers, but we'll cover many more surveys than two. And then we will have a short break. And after that we will come back for longitudinal studies where we'll have three speakers. Um, so uh, after each of the presentations, you will have five minutes to ask any questions as well from the speakers. I'm handing over to Greta, who's a senior researcher at the Health and Biomedical Service team at National Centre for Social Research. She works mainly on the health study for England, but has experience across both domains of social research. So over to you. All right, thank you. Okay, um, so as I'm sure you know, the National Centre for Social Research carries out a number of cross-sectional health surveys and the aim of today's presentation is to talk about each one of them and to give you an update on where they're currently at. Yeah, so I will give you an update on six of our surveys, um, so which are the health survey for England, the adult psychiatric morbidity survey, um, the national study of sexual attitudes and lifestyles, the National Diet and Nutrition Survey, Adult Oral Health Survey, and the Gambling Survey of Great Britain. So the first one, we'll talk about the Health Survey for England, or HSC um, for short. Uh, this is also the survey that I work on. So what is the Health Survey for England? So it's a health examination survey meaning that we collect both self-reported data from participants and physical measurements and biological data. Um, data is collected annually and has been running for over 30 years. And this enables us to monitor trends in the health of the nation. It's a cross-sectional survey with a fresh sample of participants selected each year with approximately 8,000 adult interviews and 2,000 child participants each year. HSC has a nationally representative sample based on the random selection of households across England. And the study is commissioned by NHS England and it is carried out by a collaborati collaborative team at Natsen and UCL. So the most recent HSC report was on 2022 data. It was published in two parts. Um, so just recently in June, we reported on adult health-related behaviors, adult drinking, and child health and health-related behaviors. And then later this year, part two will be published on adult health, overweight and obesity, social care provision, and kidney disease. The data for HSC 22 will be available on the archive um, later this year. HSC 24, so we're currently in field and field work is being conducted face to face. The HSC includes core content each year and then additional content in some other years. So these lists aren't exhaustive but gives you an indication of some of the topics that are covered in the interview and biomedical visits. Um, the core content varies year to year, and then there is additional content that is funded and added in by external funders. So in 24, the core content for interviews include general health, long-standing illness, hypertension, diabetes, smoking, drinking, social care, height, and weight measurements. And the biomedical, vi biomedical visit includes content on prescribed medication, blood pressure, waist and hip measurement, blood and saliva samples. And then this year we have some additional content which is on chronic pain, loneliness, audit alcohol questions and gambling. Moving on to the next survey which is the Adult Psychiatric Morbidity Survey, or APMS for short. What is APMS? Um, 
It's a nationwide survey that is conducted roughly every seven years since 1993, and it was last run in 2014. It provides quality data on prevalence and trends in mental health in England. It is commissioned by NHS England and sponsored by the Department of Health and Social Care. It is run by the National Centre for Social Research in collaboration with the University of Leicester. It is called the National Study of Health and Wellbeing in Field and has a target sample of around 8,000 interviews. Moving on to fieldwork. So fieldwork for APMS includes a two-stage design. Participants have an initial interview with a survey questionnaire, including self-completion component, and then a subsample are followed up with a clinical assessment. There were two samples for APMS in 2023, and the first, the first is the core sample, which include, includes a deprived area boost, and the second is an ethnic minority boost. Despite the best efforts, the performance of the ethnic minority group sample was below expectations, and the projected volume of interviews achieved by the service closure would not have had a meaningful impact on APMS 23, and to continue would not have been a good use of public funds. It was therefore decided to suspend the ethnic minority group sample pending a review on the methodology. And here you can see the content that's included in the main interview visit. So there is the initial CAPI questions, which are then followed by a self-completion of for more sensitive topics. And then there is a final section of CAPI questions. This is then followed by a clinical assessment for a subsample of participants. And the clinical assessment covers topics on psychosis, autism, and ADHD. Moving on to the next survey, which is the National Study of Sexual Attitudes and Lifestyles, or NATSAL for short. What is NATSAL? So NATSAL is a representative biobehavioral survey of the general population in Britain. NATSAL was first carried out in 1990 in response to the HIV and AIDS epidemic. Since then, it has been carried out approximately once every 10 years and it provides high quality information about sexual behavior, attitudes, outcomes, and service use, among other things. Here's an overview of NATSAL4 data collection. So there are four data collection arms, and of those, three are probability samples, and are also NATSAN arms, and there's one a non-probability arm and is run by Ipsos. So the probability samples include the address-based probability sample, probability panel telephone, and probability panel online. And the non-probability arm includes the non-probability panel online. So I will not go over I will not go over each one in detail, but here you can see the number of participants in each arm, um, <clears throat> mode of data collection, the length of survey in each arm, the age of participants, whether the arm had a young person boost, whether the arms had an ethnic minority boost, and then the dates that they were in the field. So fieldwork of NATS and ARMS ended in December 23, and fieldwork for Ipsos ARM ended in April 24. Currently, work is underway to bring together the different ARMS of data collection, assess quality of data from each ARM, and explore statistical approaches to combine data from the different ARMS. And the NATSL team, are aiming to publish initial peer-reviewed papers around November 25, and then we will archive the data for other researchers to use at the same time, and it will be deposited in the UK Data Archive. Moving on to the National Diet and Nutrition Survey, or NDNS. 
So NDNS is a cross-sectional continuous survey of diet and nutrition for individuals in the UK. It's designed to be representative of the general UK population. It provides information needed to develop and monitor public health and protect food safety. It is funded by the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities and the Food Standards Agency. And that's in work in a consortium with MRC Epidemiology Unit at Cambridge. <clears throat> Year 16 is moving on to a new, a new fieldwork model, which you can see on this slide. So there will be no in-person interviewer stage as in previous years. Instead, participants will be recruited via an initial invitation letter requesting them to complete an online survey and four 24-hour dietary recalls. And a telephone assistant option is available if required. Participants will also be requested to collect a spot urine sample and agree for a biomedical field worker to make contact if they consented to this in the online survey. On the biomedical side, the key changes are an increase in number of blood samples collected from 500 to 750. We're including 12 to 17 month olds in the survey, including blood sampling. And anyone who is pregnant or breastfeeding will also be included. And then a bit further down the line, we will also have the sodium sub-study, which will be embedded in the biomedical visit. So pilot of the fieldwork model is now complete and the development for main stage launch is now in progress and due to launch in autumn 2024. Here's the content included in the survey. So within the online survey, there is the household questionnaire and the individual questionnaire. Topics in the household questionnaire include con consent, household grid, and main food provider. Some topics included in the individual questionnaire are eating habits, smoking, drinking, and food avoidance. And some topics will be asked to all participants, but there are some topics that are age specific. Moving on to adult oral health survey. So the adult oral health survey provides up-to-date surveillance information on adult oral health status, health inequalities, oral health related quality of life, and oral health behaviors. It is conducted roughly every 10 years since 1968. The 23 survey is covering England only. It is funded by the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities and the Department of Health and Social Care. And the consortium is made of NATSEN, ONS, and academic partners. So the Adult Oral Health Survey 23 survey is a paired visit for the first time. So interviewers and dental examiners visit the households together. Up to two adults per household could take part. Um, <clears throat> so the interview consists of two parts. The interviewer administers the household questionnaire, individual questions on health and lifestyle, oral health behavior, as well as scales including the modified dental anxiety scale and the oral impact of dental problem scale. And then the examiner conducts a 20 minute examination of the mouth gums and teeth and looking at the they also look at the health of the intraoral soft tissues presence of dentures tooth condition tooth wear and root condition um, field work took place from june 23 to april 24 and analysis and reporting is now underway and moving on to the gambling survey of great britain So what is the gambling survey of Great Britain? GSGB collects data on gambling behaviors among adults in Great Britain. Gambling is increasingly seen as a public health issue because it can cause addiction and have significant impact on mental health. 
The aim of the survey is to measure gambling participation and the prevalence of problem gambling. It's a push to web methodology and aims for an annual sample of 20,000 adults. It is funded by the Gambling Commission and carried out by the National Center for Social Research in collaboration with Heather Wardle from the University of Glasgow. The report is published annually with interim quarterly reports as well. So looking at upcoming and recent reports, year one wave two report was published on the 27th of June and year one annual report will soon be published on the 25th of July. And that's it, thank you.